Playing solo in Apex Legends is a reality most gamers face. Unfortunately, Apex is also one of the hardest games to have success in without a squad. Luckily, I'm also primarily a solo gamer, and today I'm sharing everything I've learned over the past 20 seasons regarding solo queue. First things first, you must change your mindset. Majority of Apex players have the same two problems. One of those problems being they think they're better than they actually are. And two, you don't give your random teammates the benefit of the doubt and just assume they suck at the game. The truth of the matter is I don't blame most players for thinking this way. If you play long enough, you'll get pretty good, which in turn will boost your Apex ego. And second, the community does a really good job of putting down random teammates. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but chances are some of you watching this video are the sucky randoms players complain about. It's important to change your mindset because, well, for starters, you're in this thing together, whether you like it or not. A quote that fits beautifully here, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. The reality is, even if your teammates aren't good at the game, the opponent doesn't know that, at least not yet. Also, they take attention off of you, and they shoot. Even if they miss, they still shoot. There was a point in my Apex career when I was the person I'm talking about. Thought I was better than I was, hindsight's 2020, and I would do what I thought was best regardless if my team joined me or not. Oftentimes, this wouldn't work in my favor, even if it might have been the right call. Usually I would die, or my teammates would, and then I would rage because my teammates didn't follow, when in reality, I left them. You can't make your teammates follow you, but you can control whether you follow them or not. So even if you don't like to play, or are in a bad spot, play with your team. You'll have more success in the alternative, I can assure you. Now that your mindset has changed, the next thing you must do is turn on your mic and use it. A squad full of good players can get away with not using a mic simply because they absorb all the information being displayed. Your teammates help, the map. Are you in ring or do you still need to rotate? If so, how far? What weapons are the enemy using? Are any of them cracked? All of this info is displayed at your disposal, no mic needed. However, the key word there was a squad full of good players. Chances are that won't be the case for you, which is fine. I like to take matters into my own hands anyway and not leave anything up to chance. Therefore, game after game, I load in, leave my mic on, and try to pull players out of their shell. There's no guarantee your teammates will use their mic, even though 99% have one. Again, you can't control your teammates, but what you can do is use the mic to lead your team. More than likely, they're missing all the subtle clues I mentioned earlier, so it's your job to serve it up on a gold platter to your squad. Oftentimes, I found my randoms look at me as I'm the leader, subconsciously at least. If I have a rhyme to my reasoning about why we should do this, 9 out of 10 times I get no pushback, and they are happy to be following some plan rather than just winging it. If you're someone who blames your teammates or think they're stuck in XYZ rank, because you have bad teammates, yet you choose not to communicate. In my opinion, it's your fault, and you really don't have any room to complain. Kind of a harsh take, but I believe it's true. Some of you, maybe the majority, just want people to play with, and you're not really concerned with their skill level. This demographic has the easiest time finding teammates who may later on become genuine friends. Truthfully, I'm okay playing solo, but if you're someone who is looking for a dedicated squad or even a friend or two to game with, then this is what you do. You apply tip one and two from this video, so now you're going into every game with your mic on and ego checked. And you play the game. It's really that simple. Over the span of an hour or two, you're bound to run into people who one, are using their mic, and two, you get along with. Like I mentioned earlier, most players are solo and don't have many friends that play the game. It sounds like a bad thing, but it makes teaming up that much easier. Another thing you can do if you're having a hard time finding teammates naturally is go to Discord and or a popular streamer's live stream and ask in chat if anyone wants to play. I've personally never done the live stream chat option, even though I've seen it quite often. I have, in fact, went the Discord route when I was looking for a team to scrim with. 
I met some pretty cool people that were actually good at the game just by putting myself out there. If you're someone really looking for a consistent team, I'd highly recommend the Discord route. Apex is naturally a really difficult game. It just is. It takes longer in Apex to get a knock than it does to get a kill or finish in any other Battle Royale titles. This means failure is more prone to happen, especially solo. Perhaps the most important thing I'm going to share with you today is the importance of remaining calm and brushing off your losses. Whether you're squatted up or not, bad games are going to happen. I played baseball from ages four all the way through college. So a phrase I heard a lot was, if you get a hit three out of every 10 at bats, you'd make it into the Hall of Fame. Now, succeeding three out of 10 times doesn't seem like something to rave about. However, baseball is a game of failure, and I think Apex is a little bit like that too. Perhaps it's why I never get too heated when bad games come around. However, if you're someone who gets worked up because you lost RP, well, your Apex days will probably be unpleasant and short-lived. Some games are unwinnable. You do everything you could have, and the result wasn't what you wanted. The higher up in the ranks you go, the better and better everyone else is. You're not going to walk out of every Apex game as the victor. That will actually be the nuance. Most games you will actually be exiting in a death box back to the lobby. Instead of getting upset, try and look at the things you did well and also the things you didn't. This will give you the best chance of improving, climbing the ranks, and overall having the most fun possible, which is what gaming is all about. Despite the narrative, Apex is one of the best games out currently, and maybe even ever. I say this in every video it feels like, but no game has movement quite like Apex. I'll admit that season 16 through 19 weren't great, but I honestly think season 20 has been the best season Respawn has put out in its entirety. With that being said, I want everyone to enjoy the game and have as much fun as I'm having. Playing solo can either be a negative or you can make it into a positive. Just like life, you can choose to be glass half full or half empty, but ultimately that's only a decision you can make. I had an absolute blast making this video. If you enjoyed, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe so you never miss an upload. Hope this video served you. I'll see you next time.